Oh, oh that's 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 okay. Yeah. And so this is, we're not, I mean, this is just kind of an introduction to this today. Oh. Oh, this is from Kraft? Kraft. Yes. Oh, I get it. Okay. Hi. Oh. Tourism? Yeah. Do you have a picture of this? Yeah. We're having meetings in every room today. <laughs> okay, cool. It's a busy company, but it's fine. Tom, are you ready? Oh, it's fine. You have started. Oh, okay. Well, call to order. Order at nine. It looks like nine o'clock. Yeah, nine o'clock even. Roll call. Roll call. Okay. Tom. Mm -hmm. Camilla no, Campbell. Camilla Campbell. Yeah. Here. Camilla Campbell. Here. Tom Press. <laughs> She's Nancy here. Lackey. Here. Joey Salazar. Here. Sign Michaels. Okay, petitions, communications. Oh, I guess I need to sign up for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be sure to state your name for the record, please. Okay, Brad Kirby here with the Clean Up Carver Gallery, I guess, also. Uh, what I have, I showed to also City Council last night. Joe, you want to thank you guys for is I'm trying to get a First Friday's Art Walk in town. So what I propose to do is to give these out to the hotels, and the hotels are on back, there's six of them, hotels are 40 tenants or more, and circle those hotels, give them 50 apiece, and tell the clerks there's a contest between the hotels, and we'll give the clerks, whoever's behind the counter on a Friday night, we'll give them a $50 cash prize, one per hotel per month to get tourists from the hotels downtown on Friday night, the first Friday. Uh, we're calling this art walk, so it's not a merchant's walk. I do on the bottom of that says, please visit all your merchants and stop and shop at all our fine merchants downtown during the art walk. But this is just to get the people downtown. The one thing I forgot to mention, and this is also uh, art and culture, not only just art, the culture too. That's why I include the box theater, I think it's great to have it as a book side, bookmark on one side, and use it to donate and tell people about the new box theater that they just bought and what's going to happen to it. On the other side of the book end would be Gallery Row. And in between would be SCRT, I've talked to them, they could have their actors out there on the street between 5.30 to 5 and 6.30 promoting their play that starts at 7. Uh, I haven't talked to the Miners uh, Museum yet. Uh, and I've talked to Raggio, of course, and I think he's a crazy artist we need to uh, talk about in town. Uh, the other one is uh, Mitchell Museum. The one I left out and I need to maybe put them in is Fermio. I think Fermio is a new artist in town too. Forgot all about him. So in this, here's the cost, what it would cost. Now I'm going through Cedar Spring. Cedar Street Printing, Ron, of course. I'm trying to keep everything in town, so everything we spend would be spent here in town. Uh, this is just for the cost of the printing. So he said he could print about four or five hundred. I think we need about five hundred. Uh, four hundred for fifty or three hundred for the hotels, and then maybe a couple hundred for us to pass around in town. Uh, five hundred what? Five hundred cards. Flyers? Oh, cards. Cards. And he said he can do cards 500 for per month for about 120, 140 bucks, depending on how many we get. Uh, front and back side printed. Now this is just a rough copy. This is not like this is a final thing ready to go. I'm going to go to all. I've gone to most of the businesses, and I need to now go back to them with this card and see exactly what they want to say on the back. They got little four lines to put on the back and tweak it out. So this is not fine. If y'all have a good font that y'all like for the city, uh, that you use for the city, I can put that font on it. Um, and anything else you want. I want to try to keep it simple and clean. One reason I decided not to add the merchants is because we have a lot of merchants and I don't want to fill up the card with a bunch of bunch of information. I like just to keep people come down here. 
once they're down here, uh, hopefully all the merchants will be open. There'll be enough traffic from the hotels to help, you know, bring business to the merchants also. Uh, I think that's about it. I'm not sure what else I need to say, but it's not in stone, like I said, I can work with it and change it up. And I, I want to add firm here also. Any questions? And this runs all summer? I like this run through summer, through November, the eight months, starting in April. Uh, I've been doing First Fridays for for almost a year now. Uh, the last one, in, uh, and I do it every two months in the wintertime, the last one was in February, and we also had the Red Show in February that Crozone did, and also Melanie's shop was open, it had a ribbon cutting. And there's probably 30 people who went from one side to the other, all up and down the streets, at least 30. That I knew in the pack with the mayor, Carlos, and a bunch of other people. And there's people from that came to the Red Show that entered pictures there. They came up the gallery and saw me also. No, so, the thing that the merchants have is it last Friday or first Friday? There's the last Friday. No, it was last, the last Friday. Friday. Yeah. Okay, he doesn't want to hear me because when she was starting excluding the merchants, the retail shops, which I don't see where you would not consider me as a gallery, I have paintings in there, mm -hmm. and I have everything else. You're opening a can of worms for our merchants downtown. You're excluding. No, I'm But yet yeah. you're including some that yeah. are part of zone gallery. Paintings, jewelry, and clothing. Right. Curly's, painting, jewelry, and clothing. No difference. So we got we have an issue with the merchants we who do it last issue. Friday. We do. Uh, you, and you're going to. And the merchants yeah. have the last Friday. That they've been doing. Right, right. But then you're excluding. We've never excluded the merchants. We've always had those galleries. That's why I put the blip on the front saying, please, those are all our fine merchants. Well, you're not shopping. that. And when we did the postcard, us merchants paid for. So we got together and pitched in to did our, did our, did our postcards that those few couple of years with the help of Main Street. Gotcha. So, and I'm going to Main Street also you know, and ask them what they could do for I, pitching it. I think the, um, I think it's a good thing to get everybody on board. Yeah. You know that's, you know it's it's a good concept, excellent mm -hmm. concept. But I think if you have everybody on board, it's the thing is if I put better. Curly's and then I got to put Teasing Treatment and I got to put Vivica of course and I got to put everybody else and it really fills it up. Wouldn't you rather have everybody? I, I want everybody yeah. on board, but I want this to be an art walk where we're showcasing the artists, not people who have art for sale, mainly. And also there's a culture. That's why I also put the Box Theater, SCRT, and Mitchell. Then maybe Art and Culture is the board to go to. I mean, I'm going to them too. They know about this too. I'm going to all the boards. I went to City Council last night. Uh, I understand I'm, I'm opening a can of worms, but I'm also trying to say, let's all work together. Let's do a merchants weekend. We want to work together, but you're the first one that is not working together by including. Don't even put them on there. Do the art walk. Ours used to be called the Friday art walk until we had issues with the same thing we're doing. And we, then we just start calling it the last Friday. But we didn't include any, everybody. We just said, come on downtown. Come to Main Street. Come to the Commercial Street. You're the one that's right. excluding us, not 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 well, anybody else. Also, if you want me to stay open, Brad, yeah. you're going to have to you're going to have to well, do a little bit better than that because I won't. You would stay open because you see a lot of people going to buy your shop, and you're not open. That's what I want to bring the people from the hotels. But then, you, if you want me to open, then I would advise you to do something different well, and not put them. Well. I, I understand what you're trying to do, Brad, but and I, I think it... Uh, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, sorry. Uh, I, I think uh, it's too exclusive. It's You're excluding parts of the downtown. If the goal is to get travelers from motels, hotels, mm -hmm. downtown, they need to have a, a lot of reasons to come downtown, even though we are seeing them migrate downtown more and more. Right. But I think, I think this is not as inclusive as it could be. But also when I start including everybody, it gets overcrowded with the well, places. Well, that's a good it's problem. It's really though. defined. I'm that's just trying to make it simple where that's people have a reason to come down here for art and culture. So. Well, and I know I was going up against some opposition, and that's fine. I want to keep it simple, though. 
I don't want to put everybody's name. And once I put one person's, the other person next door is going to complain, and then the next door. Well, why don't you do a map for everybody? A map would be great. And yeah. this, is not for, a map. this is not just the only thing the city should be doing. This is just one of many things. Merchants had a little map, a fold-out map, mm -hmm. that showed the main street and showed commercial with a dot on everyone and put the names of all the stores and everything downtown. And they should do that also. Or how about in combination with? In combination with, yeah. This is just for our walk for to get First Friday going. Uh, I think also a last Friday merchant's walk, uh, a map of showing everything. I think we need a lot to go out of the hotels. I just kind of want to make a little contest with the hotels to see how much they can bring, how many people they can bring out of the hotels. Who's going to monitor the funding? Hmm? Who's going to monitor the funding? The way I figured it, you could have a uh, account set up and you can pay Ron directly. I don't expect to get Who's a check. you? <coughs> you, you. Um, so you're asking for funding. Have you turned in a grant request? No, I haven't. This okay. is just preliminary. I'm just kind of like setting course, seeing if y'all want to get involved or not. Oh, yeah. Well, our new, as, as I explained to you the other day, our new funding request is by a grant request. Um, so, Ms. Kimball, we have a pretty full agenda. I think we've done so, petitions yeah. and communications. All right. I, I believe what I heard um, yeah. okay. a board member, Ms. Lackey, say is that you should get with Marty. Okay. Yeah. I will. Thank you very much. All right. Anybody else? Petitions and communications. Okay, we move on to the approval of minutes. Everybody read all those minutes? Any questions? I move to accept all the minutes from February 6th, the which was tables, February 20th, which was the work session, and February 27th, which was a special meeting. Anybody second that? Do we have a second for the motion? Do we have a second? Aye. All approved. Aye. 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 Can we do a roll call? Roll call. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Kress? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes. Okay, we're doing a review, um, approval of um, invoices, review of account details, sorry. Yeah. Madam, Madam uh, Vice Chair. Yes. <laughs> Madam Vice Chair, so what I've provided in your packets is uh, the tourism fund, as it appears um, in our um, packets, and the budget and tourism pro profit and loss statement. As it is, this is current, correct? So I think perhaps uh, Ms. Lackey and Mr. Kress can speak about the meeting that Ms. Hackett and I had with them to develop this sheet, which we're calling the budget and tourism profit and loss statement. And this is for your review and to give us some feedback. We'd like to have this become the the permanent document. Uh, Tom, do you want to go first? Please. Okay. Uh, I felt that it was important to have uh, more than a thumbnail sketch of our our funding uh, as it relates to revenue, what we have committed to, what we have spent, and what we have remaining in each individual account. So in the meeting, we. Uh, comprise this column which shows uh, we're not so much in, uh, interested in discussing the expenditures as it relates to the welcome center wages or the trolley most immediately but we're more interested in the actual tourism revenues and expenses um, what we did was to um, highlight and you'll see under advertising and publications the four uh, media outlets that we will be advertising with and the total 
and you can see that you know what we've exceeded. Now that's just in advertising and publications. We also have funds in outside contract services as well as local festival funding. So we see that we really haven't spent anything other than our advertising, which we needed to do for deadlines. So as we go forward, if we <clears throat> keep in mind that we have a budget of 298000 to stay within, we may not spend it all in other categories and we'll still be at or under budget or possibly over a little bit. But now we're in control to see where we have funds available and where, um, where our spending is going. It's more defined. So $298,086 is the budget? Yes. And of that, you've committed already $174,241.91? Correct. And you can see, as Ms. Lackey suggests, everything that's committed, it shows the line item? Correct. And then expended is what we've actually processed and paid out through the city. And Ms. Hackett will add a total for expended so you can see what the total expended is. As, and, and, and as, if I use wages as an example, you can see what you've budgeted, you can see what's committed, you can see what's been expended in January, and, and, and then what's remaining is zero. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course the last column remaining, and this is what Ms. Lackey and Mr. Kress really wanted to see. At any given meeting, you ought to be able to see where you have funds right. remaining. Right, so as we would go forward, um, for outside contract services or festival funding, uh, we would be able to see as we go forward with grant requests per quarter what we're actually committing to and or funding. So I think the staff highlight from this particular report would be that you've budgeted 25000 in advertising and publication. Mm -hmm. You've exceeded that through your KRDO, your Mountains and Mesas, the Colorado Life, the OSVG, and the True West. Mm -hmm. So you're at a negative 12300 in that line item. And those are the costs for upcoming publications which we had to spend for this year. And so it, it, that 12300 overage is still figured in the fact that you have 123844 available to you Correct. at any given time to spend. Right. Right. Does this work for you in terms of, perhaps Mr. Salazar or Ms. Campbell, you can give us some feedback? Um, on my part, so of that 123000 what are we able to spend it on? Is there a certain area we have to spend in? Is, can we break it down, or is it just it's available? And, you know, we have different ideas. It's flexible. Oh, it's, it's flexible. flexible. Okay. So it's not just new entertainment or new marketing. Yeah. It's, well, say, it's for available. instance, um, <laughs> Say, for instance, in the second quarter, we get a grant request from someone that wants to do something in the fall, but they need, you know, partial payment now. Mm -hmm. We would commit and then pay it out as we go, but we may not have enough money left over in a particular category, say, festival funding. We can pull out a contract service. We can move money around as long as we stay within our budget. Mm -hmm. It's very flexible this way. And, and my biggest thing is I just want to make sure the money that we spend mm -hmm. brings business to the businesses that are in business right yes. now. Yes. You know, and I mean, if we're not bringing tourists to our town or in our shops or restaurants, we're not. I don't think we're doing our job. Right. You know, as far as tourism board. I agree, Joey. Uh, Commissioner Cooper. Sure. Um, what are you? <laughs> board member Salazar. <laughs> we're supposed to be more formal now. Mm -hmm. um, the reason that. I personally felt that we needed something that, that gave us more of an overview is exactly that point. Mm -hmm. If we felt that there was something in the third quarter that we wanted to do going into the fall, but we were depleted in funds in other areas, as long as we're in or under 123, yeah. then we're okay. Right, yeah. I, think, I think you did a great job. I, I, it's nice to see where the money's at, you know, where, where we're at, right. so we could budget for more things coming. So, good job. And then the second document we'll have for you when I'm at your last meeting on the 20th will be um, 
a second document which is going to show Mr. Kress had asked for some history. So we're going to show your actual fund balance and we've been able to go back to 2013 and build your history in each one of these categories across. The other thing too, Tara, I forgot to ask uh, uh, at our meeting on Monday was uh, can you provide to us what we have spent on uh, what, sp what types of monies have we spent on uh, events that have over the last several years? Not so, just, I'm not just so concerned about travel, but I'm mostly concerned about grants that have been funded. Yes. So what we can do, and this is this is a, maybe a limitation for us, when the city moved to Tyler several years ago, we only have two years of history. I know grants weren't done last year. We'll do our very best through the okay. files to pull. We can obviously through the audits and the budgets tell you exactly what was spent in the local festival funding line. Mm -hmm. We'll do our best to break that down. Just so we can see, are we over, under, should we don't get, devote more money to certain categories? Once again, we can show you the amount, total amount that was spent. What I don't know if we can do is say 40000 was spent. It would, I, can, yeah. I don't know that we can break right. it down by organization. But this kind of gets us on that It track. does. So, so the report we're speaking about will show the local festival line from 2013 forward. Right. Mm -hmm. And then okay. as we go towards the end of the year under local festival funding, outside contract services, as you'll see under outside contract services, Studio 6, we still owe them $2,600. And then as we spend money going towards festivals, we would then line itemize them as we did under advertising. Uh, one other addition, uh, Tara, that you were going to add was uh, revenue that we see in per quarter, Joey, this goes to what you were asking about. Um, if we see an uptick in tourists, at the, at lodging, uh, uh, lodging businesses, restaurants, downtown revenues, we'll be able to track, because there's going to be another line item down here below that shows what we're actually seeing in increased revenues. And right now, um, Cheryl hasn't recorded the lodging tax collected from January, so that's why right. your revenue is at zero. Um, the other report that you have, what this report doesn't show you, this is your profit and loss. Mm -hmm. It's based on budget, what you've allocated to spend. What the other report will show you is your fund balance. So there is a balance that you carry that's not budgeted for anything. And I believe right now it's about 117000 at the end of this last year. And then Ms. Hackett will be, once again, once we get these financial reports where you like them and you feel like this is something you want to see on a monthly and then quarterly basis and everybody's comfortable, then I think Ms. Hackett will lead you in a fiscal uh, policy discussion. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the committed line items, when you get down to the tourism section, Ms. Hackett's going to do the um, research. These were off the top of our head numbers, the committed column, when we met with Ms. Lackey and Mr. Cress on Monday. So Marty's going to go back and actually pr do the research, and she'll have a file that has the commitments, whether they're through the minutes where you committed or whether they're through contracts, like the billboards that exist. So at any time, she's able to reference the commitment. So for example, under billboards, we've listed the commitment as $12,515. Well, Ms. Hackett will research the contracts and that may be 11,200, it may be something like that. So we want to finite these numbers. With just two days, we haven't been able to do that, but we will by the, by the in the next couple of meetings have this fleshed out pretty well. I think it's a Great start. Thank you, Mark. It is. Ms. Hackett. Thank you, Ms. Hackett. <laughs> the Madam Vice Chair, may I ask a question? Um, an interesting question arose this morning as to whether or not the Tourism Board was going to follow the ordinance specifications to fund uh, entities through grant process for only advertising and marketing, and I needed some clarification on whether or not 
there was going to be sponsorship monies or if it was just going to be advertising and marketing monies as it's as it's stated in the ordinance. Can you use the example of like what it would be for? It would be for a band or right, or something like that. that. So if we have a um, event that's being proposed that would need sponsorship money for to hire bands for a music festival or something along those lines, would they be required to only use tourism funding? for advertising and marketing, or could they use it to pay their bands, or anything like that? Mm. Advertising, marketing. So as it reads in the ordinance, is how you want to follow that? Well, Do you want to put this on for a work think, session I discussion? Think work session. Okay. Work okay. session discussion. Yeah. 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 And we can um, perhaps bring you specific examples. Yes. OK. It's That's a great. Was asked. And I think that goes also to be continued in the work session, but it's the flexibility mm -hmm. of the funding. Right. So there would be like a difference in paying a coordinator a salary to do a festival versus paying for a band to come in. And well, well, in our resolution, advertising and marketing are very, 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 very broad they terms. Are. Very broad. Without advertising, do we have the festivals? Without marketing, do we have a successful? And you've got to pay to market and pay to advertise. I think that's our contribution towards any event. Is is that? Okay, we'll make this a work session agenda item for two weeks. Thank you. Okay, approval of the invoices. We've already done that. We've done there was no motion. There was no motion. They were reviewed, but there they was were no reviewed, motion. But no motion. So I accept a motion to approve the minutes. Oh, the, so invoices. the invoices. The invoices. Sorry. So KCRT. Was that established that that was ours? Yes, it was. It was. So attached to that invoice is. Um, Apparently there was a commitment made by the board, the city board, um, sometime in June as to how this marketing was going to roll out. So the board apparently committed to um, a certain number of ads to be run by KCRT, and I believe these are one-minute ads, and adjusting the content of those ads to reflect whatever events are going on at the time right. so they could be you know, changed out. Um, and so uh, I asked for some clarification on, you know, on the on the invoice, and that's what I was told. So the second sheet shows um, how it was estimated on, on how many ads would be running. Then you have the total at the bottom of 810 total ads, and I was also told that that can be readjusted if we have new events coming up. We can take from another month and add new ads to that. Um, and so this was the. This is the agreed contract, so um, I think this is a binding contract that was already approved. When and so you will see these monthly ads from KCRT. And so we'll also need Marty to, I mean, Ms. Hackett to figure out what amounts we are expecting to pay in April, May, and June and put that in the financial as committed. Um, can I get an email of that app email to me? Any chance just so I could do it? Now these are, these are, um, they change. They change. They change. Oh, they change. Yeah. We can set up a an appointment for you to go over oh, yeah. to KCRT, okay. Mr. Salazar, and listen to a number of them. If you would like, we can work directly with them to set that appointment okay. up. And, and we can also, if you have ideas on specific ways you want to promote, I mean, because we're promoting anything that's tourism related right now. So it might be Blues Fest in the fall. It might be Sappy Trail Days in the summer. It might, you know. So we can we can decide how we want that content out there. So if, if that's something you'd like to do, do we can, do if you, we don't provide them with guidance, they figure, you, kind of figure it out themselves. Do you, uh, have you heard some of the ads do you, before they have been played? Or I you, have not. You, you, you I've haven't called them at noon, of, but never before. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you haven't uh, been a part of any of the no. So would you Maybe like me get at the board's request? I can. Uh, what goes in there? Yeah, I think I think one of us definitely should be. But I think we should be able to hear what's going out there. I don't think that, um, not that they don't do a good job, but I, 
I mean, if we're trying to promote something, input, but yeah, you need mm -hmm. you know, a little input from us. Yeah. So we'll set an appointment for Ms. Hackett and Mr. Salazar to go over and listen to those ads and, and provide some feedback. Okay. Maybe we can figure out how we can better improve that flow of communication. Then roll call for KCRT. Um, Ms. Campbell? Yes. Um, Mr. Kress? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes. KCRT is approved. Um, <coughs> Studio 6, so clarification on Studio 6. There was an invoice provided previously that was a total of 5200 When that invoice was submitted, um, the 2600 for the December website was on one side, and 2600 was for the final um, fulfillment of the contract was on the back side. And so accounting only saw the 2600 on the front side, and so that left us with a balance of 2600 And might I remind the board that um, the website will not be released to us until um, for our own management until the contract is in all monthly invoices are paid. Then we're sure this is the final. This is the final. Okay. Motion to Motion approve. Motion to approve. So moved. Roll call. Um, Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Kress? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes. Studio 6 is approved. Um, Miles Partnership. So that is the 14,000 that was previously committed for 2019, um, total 14,943. This was discussed in the meeting, and you asked Ms. Hackett to move forward, but there was not a motion on the table to approve the expenditure. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Kress? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes. Miles is approved. The only thing on, on that one is, is if we could have a, a deadline for uh, things that we could submit into that magazine. Okay. And uh, maybe a, a few months before. That generally comes up in the fall. Uh -huh. So it, there are some things that needed to be changed, changed out. Now. Absolutely. Okay. So just for clarification, Ms. Hackett, this bill will pay for the 2019 OSPG. Mm -hmm. Okay, just wanted to clarify. And they've been provided with the magazine and the ad as right. it stands. Mm -hmm. uh, motion to approve the out front billboard. I have no history on this, so I can't speak to it. Where is this billboard at now? It's under advertising and publications and Oh, you mean the actual oh, billboard? The billboard. Oh, I twenty five. South of the Trinidad fuel stop. Is that how I read that? That's exactly how I read it. How many years have we done the billboard, and what do we have any signs of success? Or I've been here seven years, and they've been continuously renewed. It sounds like maybe what we need to do is contact them and get a copy of the contract for you to read. Mm -hmm. Can we table this, or do we have to commit? To we are. Co we we have a we have contract with them. I think we can get you the contract, and then we can okay. look at what the terms are. Now, do, have they changed it, or is it the same? I think when we get the contract, it'll have terms in there for how often they'll do a free upgrade. Okay. And can, I would just. Can we have input on what goes on. Oh, yeah. Every time there's an, an upgrade, you have absolute input. I would refer to Ms. Campbell and say, would you say it's been more than two years since we had a discussion about the content of the billboard? I want to say this was yeah. three years ago, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to say they have a, a, I'd say roughly three years since they've been upgraded. So I'm not sure we're due. We're due. We are. We're due. So many things now that are happening. I motion to approve. Second. Um, Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Press? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes. Last one would be the work on the wall during the mountains and mesas, and we haven't had a discussion on this. We just need a motion. So moved. Second? I second. Roll call, Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Press? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes.
Okay, we're going to go into discuss the reserve balance, or? Um, I'm certainly happy to, to tell you what a fiscal policy would be. I think after meeting with Ms. Lackey and Mr. Kress on Monday, my recommendation would be you don't yet have a full picture of the financials, and it's really difficult to have a specific discussion about what policy you want to implement until, I would say, 90 days from now, okay. when you have a really good handle, and suggest that Ms. Hackett keep this on the agenda. Fiscal policy would be a general discussion about your fund balance. That'd be one aspect. So during my time with the city, I've been in and out of the tourism world, first as the Welcome Center Manager and then through my Development and Services Department. I've seen the fiscal, I've seen the tourism budget balance be as low as 40,000 and as high as 290,000. So what a fiscal policy would do is it would be a, a discussion amongst you for how much you think you ought to be keeping in reserve on a regular basis and that reserve, what, what types of uses would cause you to dip into the reserve. For example, you might budget a $300,000 expenditure in lodging tax if you had a, a natural disaster, if there was a fire at a major hotel that took it down and you saw a lack of lodging tax coming up, that would be a reason to go into your reserve. Um, what wouldn't be a reason to go into your reserve for the regular operation or extension of marketing or something like that? I think you need to decide for the board into the future what would be acceptable. You might say in September someone comes forward and they have an exciting new event, but you've already committed all your dollars. Would you go into your reserve for that? I'm not telling you that's right or wrong, but I think when you set the fiscal policy, then as you cycle on and off the board, and someone else is sitting in your seat three or four years from now, they have some guidelines on how to operate. The Tourism Board in all of its years has never set a fiscal policy. Council went through this when Mr. England was here, and they've stayed with it. It would be adopted by resolution, and the expectation is that you would operate the tourism fund based on those guidelines. So it can be a really simple document, but actually putting it in place sets guidelines for your board in the future. Do you have any questions for me now on what a fiscal policy would be? I, I just feel that if, if we're moving ahead and, and we're, we're actually gaining more, it's always a good thing to look at it as, you know, adding more revenue to fund the events. Uh, fund, uh, mm -hmm. the grand events. That's where I see it. The other, the other side of the balance is, while, you, while it may be incumbent upon you to keep a balance for emergencies, it's also incumbent upon you to spend the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, to actually advertise the, the municipality. It wouldn't be appropriate for you to collect half a million dollars in the tourism fund. I mean, the expectation from the public is that you're given those lodging tax dollars to market the city. So it's the balance between how much do you use and how much do you set aside. So, okay. So Ms. Hackett can bring that forward and do, would you say 90 days would be acceptable? That would be fine. Okay. Okay. I hear there's going to be a new DOLA person around that might be able to help track down sure. some business policies sure. for you. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking for insiders. We're looking for you. Yeah. <laughs> if you can leave a card before you leave. <laughs> My number's not changing. <laughs> well, thank God. <laughs> Permanently. Resolution authorization expenditures for the Tourism Board Manager. So the resolution has been discussed in work session, and I just we just need a, um, a motion to approve. I move that we accept um, the resolution authorizing our tourism manager to spend up to I believe what is it twenty five hundred dollars yes. with that board approval. With the approval with of the chair, right, 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 right. but without convening. I second it. Roll call, Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Kress? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes. I'm moving for legal purposes. This has to be Camilla now. Last year. Because she got the 
So Camilla, what I'll do is I'll change this out for official signature to okay. your signature on there and then I'll give it to you so you can sign it and then we'll gotcha. submit it. And then we file these in the city clerk's office and we will start with resolution number one and there'll be a file in the city clerk's office every time you make a resolution. Okay. And that's your official filing of the official document with the city once Ms. Campbell signed. Yeah. Okay, website maintenance. Go so ahead. Again, Ms. Camp, um, Chair, uh, Madam what? Chair, Vice Chair, whatever you are. We're uh, really confused today. We're to this we after a while. Doesn't um, that at all. the board's request, um, I've been combing the city to find out what we could do as far as picking up our website maintenance. I've approached the college for internship, and somebody rose to the surface. So I'd like to present Ms. Christy Rogers with Co-Designerly, uh, who has a proposal um, to maintain our website. So with your permission, may yes. Ms. Rogers Come on. approach? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, would you like to introduce, introduce yourself and kind of just sure. talk about what we've got going on? Sure. Um, so I met uh, Marty just, I guess it was last, last week, week. yeah, um, through Rodney Wood, um, who's my friend and landlord, actually. And um, I've been working with Art Cartopia Museum to, um, to build their website, which I'm in the final throes of finishing, and that's gone quite well. Um, Co-Designerly Solutions is my LLC, and I'm basically, a, I am a designer, and I do various kinds of design through that. Um, and uh, web development and design is one of those. Um, and so being, being here in town now, I've been sort of putting out feelers. Um, I am also uh, working for the college for 28 hours a week, helping out with one of their STEM programs, Upward Bound. Um, and that's going really well, I'm really loving that. So, um, so right now I'm just sort of uh, taking on clients on uh, small scale projects, I would say, and based on the description that Marty had provided of what you all are looking for, that's definitely in my wheelhouse. I've worked with WordPress websites, as well as Wix, and then Squarespace, and those are three different interfaces. Um, for, for the most part, they're pretty similar, but, so do they all have copies of the proposal? They do. Okay, yeah, so that was something that Marty had asked that I draft up, and um, so those are the, the basic criteria or the parameters that we had talked about. One of the things that I do do in addition to the, that I would do in addition to just the maintenance that we discussed, which sounds fairly, um, kind of a light touch um, because the website is essentially already built and it's in good condition. I looked at the back end and I think it would be pretty easy to and fairly quick, uh, again, based on what Marty had said your needs are. Um, and uh, another thing that I do do that I feel really strongly about actually is the evaluation uh, piece. And that is, um, for instance, with our Cartopia Museum's website right now, one of the things I'm doing is usability testing. Um, and that is you know, I can get in there and all the, the bits and bytes as, as a designer and think that, oh yeah, this is absolutely intuitive and people are absolutely going to be able to find what they need. But that's not necessarily how it's going to translate depending on a given user. And so I've been taking um, just whoever, whoever I could find uh, varying levels of uh, um, expertise with technology and sitting them down in front of the computer, in front of the website, and I have a, a set 10 questions or 10 functions that I'm asking them to perform, and then just watching how they navigate and watching the points, if any, at which they get tripped up and then making changes accordingly. Um, so that's that's something that, that I incorporate into most of my work on websites. And if that was something that you all felt would be appropriate for this, I you know that could be a benefit as well, but at the very basic level, the maintenance and updating events and pictures and things is something I'm definitely looking forward to doing, so. Can you ask a question? Uh -huh. um, nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> um, looking at our website, um, and I'm thinking you might know where we kind of want to go, uh -huh. how many hours are you thinking per month that you would be billing? It would, I, from what Marty said, it would really vary. Um, and so, 
um, a range. Yeah, well, in my mind, my, my current bandwidth would be no more than five hours a week. Um, but uh, I, think, I think it's sort of an almost an as-needed basis um, from the way that she had described it. Some months, especially here, some months are far busier than others, um, in which case there might be um, you know, points at which that threshold would be reached. Um, I did tell her that the rate that's listed on there, I'm a little bit negotiable on that, and, and um, you know, we could either uh, cap the number of hours per month mm -hmm. um, that we were talking, or, um, or lower the rate slightly. I would be willing to do that in this particular instance. Um, but I don't have any expectation of a certain number of hours per week. It was sort of more um, on an as-needed basis. We would figure out you know, what the timeline is, depending on the urgency, depending on my bandwidth at that point in time. So there's, there's some flexibility there, I guess. That's a long-winded answer to your question. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? I'll ask another. Sure. <laughs> um, is this uh, solely operable, or would you be the only person to be able to input photos, or uh, is it exclusively up to you? Oh, um, like can Marty add? Oh, photos? of course. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. No. This isn't something. This isn't where. Um, and actually, I guess given your current situation, um, where the website is sort of owned by this other entity. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, this would be um, where she would be essentially telling me what she needs done, uh -huh. and then I would be implementing those okay. changes. The control would stay with her, okay. um, absolutely, or with you all. So I think what she's asking, yeah. uh, Christy, so right now the only capabilities I have in, in manipulating the website is okay. the calendar. Okay. So if I had a photo that I could drop in at some point, we like the the ability to, to do this ourselves. Sure. You know, so of course. I could get in there and drop in a yeah. photo every now and then yeah. without you know, putting you out and saying, you know, I don't need you to do this. Go away. I can do this myself. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Is that exactly. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, I somewhat okay. misunderstood. Yeah. No, my, my thought is this would be more of a partnership rather than me being the sole owner um, of it. And I would be um, a support, you know, uh -huh. um, because Marty had said, you know, just need, needs to delegate this given the, the workload and everything else. So. And I like the concept of maybe like under the lines of KCRT where some months we know that we're busy, we'll be adding more in some months and the other months like that. Oh, yeah. I like that program kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Well, that was why we had discussed the hourly as opposed to the retainer. Mm -hmm. um, because when she had, she had sort of briefly gone over the, the, uh, the other, I suppose, offer or the other um, option. Um, and and discussing the variation in, in the workload and then what might be, be needed from month to month that didn't seem to make as much sense at this point at least so are you able to um, excuse me to track like analytics like to really see the traffic coming onto the website and like you know go over like here's how many hits you got and here's the pages that's the most hits from your website. Yeah, I can get in there and take a look at, um, at what this particular, what these settings are, um, mm -hmm. and, and I should be able to do that. Most, especially WordPress is pretty good about that. Yeah. And so, um, and that would be slightly, a slightly different thing, but I'd, I'd be happy to provide, you know, sort of a brief snapshot um, if that's something that would be beneficial. And that would be a good thing mm -hmm. to submit to us because it's a good guideline for us yes. as to what's, 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 what's going on. Sure. You know, where, sure. Where we could emphasize maybe yeah. more. Yeah, okay. All right. All good? All good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you thank very you. much. Thank nice you. to meet you. Uh, thank nice you. Meet you. At this point, since you're seeing the proposal for the first time in an actual meeting, you have the ability to table it if you want to discuss it more at a work session, or you have the ability to approve it or deny it today. Either way. I think. Uh, I think we go put it in our work session. What do you? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. We're going to table it. And so, Ms. Vice Chair, can you ask for a motion to table? I need a motion to table this for our next work session. Second. Roll call, Ms. Campbell? Uh, yes. Mr. Press? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes. On that note, when do we, uh, when we pay off Studio 6, then we get control of that thing then, right? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. It's ours. We own it. Yeah, we are. So we don't know how long that's going to take. Just as soon as they get paid. Yeah, it so might be a couple paid. weeks. Okay. All right. Two weeks. So Two weeks. Three weeks. So we're in that line, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, for clarification, as we're separating ourselves from Studio Six, we own the website completely. Right. Miss Hackett will have all the back door. We owned. Um, Discover Trinidad. We're diverting Discover Trinidad to visit Trinidad, Colorado. Right. So if you go on right now and go to Discover Trinidad, it, it, it forwards you. In terms of the guide that we have printed, our printed material, we don't own that. We have the right to contract with them to update it, to reprint it. There's three options. We can, re, we can contract with them to reprint it as it is. And that would be printing costs only and their costs for handling the printing contract. That'd be option one. Option two, we can go in and make very minor changes like taking off restaurants that have closed and adding restaurants that are new. That'd be considered a minor change. And then also print it and pay them to manage the printing. The third option would be if you want to retool the entire guide it has right now the city seal logo incorporated through it, but it doesn't have the tourism logo incorporated through it. So that would be a complete redesign, and that would be a third cost. So in the future, I believe maybe at the work session, Ms. Hackett, we should discuss where you are on how many you have remaining of the current guide. There are quite a few going out right now. We're depleting by thousands right now, which is great. We have a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. well, but when you look at your budget and where you are in spending, I think you might want to start thinking about uh, what's going to be needed in the future if you want to continue the guide. Well, I've looked in the guide and there's so many restaurants that have gone now. I know. From that guide. I know. You know, and that's... Uh, so as we're exiting from Studio 6 and for the purposes of a work session discussion, do you want staff to get quotes on what the three levels would be so you have an idea? Mm -hmm. And what amount of printing? We did 40000 last time because we'll have to give them an amount to I, get a quote. Yeah, I think not as many. Okay. Because we have 40,000 now, and I, I want to say I counted at least. I didn't, I didn't bring it with me, but I usually I think we're well it. under 20 now. Yeah, we're about 22. Um, oh, right. Because of the fact that we've, we have four, we had 40,000 copies, but if we had 20, they would be gone and we could straighten out the fact that the restaurants are closed. Wasn't there something that we had to order? Something, so many, or you? We so can ask. I can see that. I think 20 was the minimum, that. and we went double that. Yeah, yeah, see, I could see that 40 to get for a good price, but to have 20 and 10 restaurants closed doesn't serve the magazine. Right? You, you know, that's... So for the purposes of staff direction, are we hearing that you want to see the quotes of what these three would be? Mm -hmm. Well, we might as well start. Yeah. Yes. Since I may not be here when you have that discussion, I'd remind you that you've got that up and coming discussion with the city council about their continuing support of the tourism board through the marijuana funding. And so, um, I, I keep that, that's a large ticket item will be the reprint, hey Mayor, that'll be a large ticket item of the reprint of the guide, so that might be something that you could add to that discussion with the city, if you okay. need some additional funding to do that. Okay. Okay, next up, RPM, Destination Development Press Initiative, Bicycling, Tourism. Um, this has been presented several times to Tourism Board. The RPM presentation came out of the Craft Tourism Initiative. It was one of three things that came out of the Craft Tourism Initiative. I think you're down to a decision as to whether you want to support this to the tune of $10,000. The city has the allocated $15,000 from the general fund should tourism decide to execute the $10,000 from the lodging tax. 
then it would be a partnership to execute a contract with RPM to move forward with their planning of the signature event. If you have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. Not a suggestion, but a question. According to uh, the document, we, or unless I'm, I think I read it in the minutes, that we have one year to enter into this agreement, is that true? No, this agreement's pending right now. I think, I, I, I can't speak to the one year, I don't remember that being part of the discussion. I think when they presented in November, they gave like a several phased okay. um, presentation. This pending agreement has been on the table since December 10th. Uh, it's in the February 27th minutes of the special session. Um, the request for funding to conduct a visitor profile study within the first year. This isn't a visitor profile study. That's a different it's item. A different oh, altogether. all right. Yeah. So, but they don't work together either. No. I wasn't here when they made their presentation, no. so I'm still trying to pull right. up. The visitor so profile study was another outcome of the CRAFT initiative, and the state has provided $10,000 to do that. That's a completely separate item. This deliverable is for the planning stages of a signature bicycle event. The visitor profile study is a study to provide you with data on who the visitors are in Trinidad. It's not related to a specific event or sector. Okay, so it has, the 10,000 was paid. The 10,000 is for the visitor study and we received it last week. And they've been paid. We have not hired anyone to do the visitor yeah, study at this time. Oh, okay. We right. received the dollars last week. It'll be on your next work session agenda. Okay. I make a motion to approve it because I feel that there's um, three good partners in it. You know, we we got a lot from the craft initiative. We got a uh, partner with the cities. Um, I feel it's a, a good step forward. What's that, Jimmy? Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Cressens and oh, by Mr. Scott. I apologize. Um, roll call. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Um, Mr. Cress? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes. And this will come out of the outside contracts line item? Outside contracts. You currently have 65000 but budgeted like in that line item. Just want to see what no, we have a it's a hiking, biking map. That was a piece that I added late to your packet. So, uh, you have reviewed this previously? And I believe this is the, the scope of work, so what um, the deliverables are and You have the map company name, correct, Marty? On this here, it says FHU Engineering GIS Services and Graphic Design. Yes. Uh, speaking with Mr. Chrysler yesterday, um, I believe there are some community members that are involved in Trinidad Trails in the <clears throat> Park and Rec group that would want to be glad to help with talking with this company to find out the particulars of pricing, what needs to be done, what can be included. Um, I don't, is it proper to have Tim come forward? Ms. Marshall? I'm sure, of course. Okay. There's been a lot of confusion over the map. Um, well, if you have specific questions, I'd be happy to answer those, but um, I think overall, we are just excited to have something like this available people, I, I know speaking to Marty, she felt that there were a lot of people that are coming to town who are looking for something exactly like this. Um, and as we become more of a recreation destination as opposed to a pass-through, there are, people are going to ask us, well, where can we go? And this is, this is the, the, the basis of that. So we, if we develop this, uh, it can be easily updated um, according to um, Howard, who's done a lot of the, the preliminary work on this. Um, and I don't know, Juan's been involved in the, the mapping too, but um, 
I think just that's plain and simple. We just think this will, would be a really, really useful thing for, for tourists coming to town. Any, any I think it's an excellent idea also, but I, at, at this point, I would, I would like a better understanding of it and maybe some more partners. Some communications, um, partners with, uh, communications with this map. Well, that's what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I'm not sure if you mean like what other partners. Well, like, is this be being presented as a as a grant to us for for monies? Is is I I think it is, but you know, uh, uh, I haven't. I'm not the presenter of this, so I, I I'm just speaking as a, a citizen and perhaps as Parks mm -hmm. and Rec um, of its usefulness. Mm -hmm. Well, like we don't have a cost, right? what it would actually be. That's what I'm they're going to work with Marty that's what on. we need to work together on. That's that's right. Right. I, yeah, I think that's what I, I that's one of the other things start. I'm saying is I'm, I'm certainly willing to work on this uh, with Marty and any others that want to get involved, come up with what the cost would be, yes. um, present that to you. Yeah, and I think, Tom, to answer your question, mm -hmm. there has been a lot of confusion. People yeah. thought that we were, they were doing the map, the Park and Rec was doing the map, but they're just I was confused from the last meeting because there was it's nothing that, well, that's right. what, that, that where we're at today. Right. Is. So Trinidad Trails and the Park and Rec group have been building the trails, but mm -hmm. they don't have any money. Yeah. Someone needs to get the maps for our mm -hmm. area, and I have said that word, and I probably need to explain what I mean by that. But of this GIS map, we're wanting to only focus on our immediate county er, biking and hiking designations and it going forward how it leads into Fisher Peak. Mm -hmm. So who is going to, I'm going to use this word, own the map so that it, just a second, can you yeah. so that it can be sold to recoup mm -hmm and have a rev be a revenue source for the tourism board. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, would it be sold by the Welcome Center? At the Welcome Center. When it's... If we can. We're not, We're not allowed, allowed to do, to do that. We're not allowed to do that, yeah. Okay, so is it allowable to, for a mobile app, for the mapping company to provide a mobile app and you pay online to get the map, or you can... Hey, not just yeah, a second. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You do? Yeah. Okay. Or you can buy it, say, at stores around town. Mm -hmm. So so we could say today it's basically in the planning stages. In the planning stages. Yeah. Well, it's been there it's since well, last summer. But, but my but, thing is that, that, that hard to swallow mm -hmm. is collecting money for this map. Well, there's a way to figure yeah. it out. Yeah, that's that's my heart level. Yeah. If you're going to go to the merchants to collect money okay. for the snap, that's going to be a. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, I shouldn't have said, said it that. Is way. it is it just going to be a map? It's accessible like to anyone who wants it. Yeah. That's that's basically. We can't sell in the welcome center, so basically it's just going to be available to those who want it. But the that's place. where the tourism comes in, as far as a grant to print this thing up. That's where we come involved. But we need people to get that core How is set it, up. Tourism wouldn't give itself a grant. Well, well, we have some taps on But we're going to maybe not own it, and maybe the city of Trinidad owns it, and Park and Rec's own it. Park and Rec? I mean, uh, uh, yeah. City of Trinidad. Well, those are just all questions that, that need to be answered. Yeah. You know, as to, so, so we need a... a plan to go forward as to how to put it all together. And if you would look with Marty. You know, I, 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 I truly believe we, we need the map. I think it truly be a, it'd be an asset for the city. So your issues more are how to, do we just then uh, treat it as the same way we treat the visitor book that Studio 6 does? We just have them printed and they're available to pick up at the Welcome Center and not look at Selling them, that would be that would cut out that layer of confusion. I, I think I mean if we didn't do a map, can we sell space on the map to recoup our money through the restaurants or businesses? You know, printing. 
you know, so you can recoup. If it's going to be a free item, the way you recoup it is you could do printing. You know, you'd have somebody like right. Well, um, were you there when we had the big multifold map? I went to the city council meeting when I think you guys presented like a couple weeks ago. That was just a small map that you had of the loop. Yeah, that, that was uh, just a, that was yeah, un completely unrelated to yeah. this map. So the map that was shown though at a couple of meetings ago had advertisers on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that's that's, that's, that's what charge solution. Yeah. yeah, you can just touch it. I mean, out of all the trails, how how far are we from being completed? I mean, I know I don't want to get to a point where we're going to print out and like the restaurants are out of business for all these places right. out of business, and then we have to reprint again. Like, so how far are we? Well, these are county to roads. Complete? They're all county roads. The no, trails. No, there's trails too. There's trails. Yeah. 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 So like, so that's everything definitely it would would be something everything accessible right. in Los Angeles County today. Okay. That would be something right. that would yes uh, that would affect any place because. Um, any place that's got trails, they're building more. And so, yes, uh, you have to do the same kind of thinking you just did with that other thing where you, you the, the guide and say, well, we're only going to print 10,000 of these yeah. because they're building new trails out there and that's going to change. Um, it would be obsolete. <laughs> it would be. Yeah. yeah, so you have to limit that. But the cool thing is that this is digital as well, so that can be updated yeah, all the time. Right. And, and you can access it online. If you make it accessible online, then people can just go and, and look it up there as well. So. And I think if it's accessible, accessible online, that that then also is another inducement to come into town, um, thereby going restaurants, lodging, etc. Wormhole is going to expand, I think. It is. If I understand correctly. Mm -hmm. So, but again, this is just the baby stage of where we're going with Fisher's Peak and our, you know, state uh, grounds at the, at the lake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well I was going to ask you a question that we were talking about, uh, you know, we're talking about selling the map. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that's typically done in other areas that are pretty well that they sell the yes. map? It, it is, actually. Um, yeah, but if you, it, there's both. Um, so, you know, if you're if you're a little cheap, you know, you can just go online and you can find trails on, on that. Um, and then at stores, you're going to find a fairly not detailed map that's, that's a handout, that's a free thing. Um, and like that, let's say, like the wormhole loop area, you might have something that was free for that that just showed where those trails go. But then for a regional map, for like I'll just use Fruta as the example. They have a beautiful big map that shows all the trails in, in the four or five areas that they've got. And that's going to be the thing that you use for your planning and, you know, like, where, where can we go on Thursday? Um, so those you pay for. And, and they're much more detailed. What about uh, trails, or well, not trails, but what about uh, bicycle lanes? Are those marked like in the communities? Is that part of the mapping procedure as well? You can put it, an inlay within a map sort of thing. We have like sometimes that um, downtown. And then people come in if you want to look by mm -hmm. lines are available in, in the community. So Tim, what is Fruita charge for that map? Um, and it's not Fruita really. It, uh, and I, it, it's, or Moab, Utah. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's the city that does them though. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know that. Um, I, I do have those maps because I bought maps, but I don't know who produced them. Mm -hmm. um, Typically, it costs about two fifty. You probably sell it for about five ninety nine, maybe six ninety nine. Yeah. You, you can go to uh, the convenience corner, and, and there are certain maps that you can buy. You can still buy the Randman Valley yeah. map yeah. for the United States. You, you can. They, they do have a section where you can buy maps in in, in all of the. Gas I'm not completely convinced that to Miss Lackey's question. You couldn't work with a vendor to actually mm -hmm. sell these, mm -hmm. and where they're bought online, and where right. I buy it online. And the fund, it, it actually goes into an account that then goes into right. tourism revenue. What so, I, what I'm, I'm very clear on is the Welcome Center can't yeah. do and an the, exchange of money. So, I'd be curious how the other communities sell mm -hmm. hard copy mm -hmm. hiking, biking maps. Would you be willing to? Would you be willing to? Well, here's 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 my suggestion. Maybe maybe this is something that Parks and Rec. And have and own. 
I don't know if that's How possible. How are they going to pay for it? To a grant. Yeah. Parks and Rec doesn't have a dedicated revenue stream. No. I mean, I'm not saying that they couldn't ask for that funding to do that. Mm -hmm. Could they? I mean, it's, it's, this is good. Why, it's why it's would you be opponent? opposed to tourism doing it? Well, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't mind us doing it if we had a partner. You know. Why would we need a partner for? Well, you if help. you could see, if you could see. I think there's going to be a content need, and yeah. so Parks and Rec's role yeah. might be to work with someone like right. Mr. Della Roca, who could provide the information. I mean, I think yeah. I see more of that yeah. as a yeah. role right. than paying for it. Right. Yeah, I can do that part. Of it. I mean, there's three but groups out there that are working on this, on these projects together, which is, like I said, is why I asked Tim to come today, because they're doing work, Juan's doing work, Howard's doing work, there's park and rec groups are doing the work, and they have all the information, but we need to figure out a way to how to get the information out there. So it sounds like this is more of a work session agenda yes. item, and I think, to Mr. Cress's point, you don't we have the actual cost yet. We, have, we, we don't have anything. Why don't, we, um, why don't Marty and I get together, and maybe Howard can join us, because he's got a lot of, he's got more background on this than I do, and um, we can put together an idea of what something like this would cost, and, it, and then we at least have a basis mm -hmm. to know, oh, okay, well, it's going to cost this much, and... <laughs> There'd be a website involved, you know, you'd have a little bit more information to be able to say, yeah. And, you know, I could see this in, in the planning stages for us to work forward to. But what I mean about partners is Parks and Rec and anybody who else wants to become involved in it. But I, I do feel that for us to to do this is... No, I agree, Tom, with what you're saying, but I didn't know what you meant by partner. Well, I don't think there'd be anything on you to come up with the map itself and say where stuff is. That wouldn't be any part of it. No. Just, that would be the, developed by Marty, me, Howard. Right, and, and also just, because we're clueless on some of these. We're not, well, none you know, of us are bicycles. Here's, here's where I'm at. I had, I've had uh, total confusion as to where the last meeting, the work session that we had was. That's where I'm at today. So what we need is a plan. Okay. Uh, yeah. where, where we're going, what we're going to do, how it's going to be presented, and, and, and just like that. Just that's, get, that's, that's what I think. It's in the planning stages. Who's going to do I'm, this? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm well, that's why I yeah. asked him to Well, that's why, that's why I'm agreeing. That's why right. we need it. So we do that. But so we're with Mark. Them you, you understand Mark. where? Yeah, sure. Do you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think if it's a clear proposal to you, and, and, and we, it's, we say, well, it's going to be 17,000 bucks, or whatever, I'm just throwing it. Right. And, and, and the thing of it is, is we don't have to go on and say we're going to buy 40,000 copies. Yeah, 5,000 copies. And mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Tara mentioned, we can get with someone who can market that for us. Um, I, I, we can we can get advertisers to advertise right. on the magazine. I, I think well, Mr. Sun might have something to add to this discussion. Um, we did a really extensive study in 2015 with a consultant in THK. They produced... Um, we didn't have GIS at the time, so they were told, please put all of the trail information in an excess database, which is pretty worthless. Um, but then a few weeks ago, I contacted them again, and they created a layer for GIS, and they also created a PDF map of all of the trails they identified. They said, don't publish them yet, because some of them cross private property, so we have to do some background work before we go telling people, go hike these things. But uh, I, I've sent the information to engineering. They can print out a great big map of the trails that have been identified. It just, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel here until we find out okay. how much is already out there. Yeah. Um, the uh, Crazy French Ranch property has 75 miles of what established trails on it. And a lot of them are drivable. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, so for, think, for the big picture, it's part of a whole planning stage. Yeah, I mean, it's already, it's already, a lot of this stuff is already out there. We don't need to go starting all over again. Okay, so my question is, we have bike races coming up. How do we convey 
that information to the people who are here. Or is that map available? Yeah, I asked Tom to print out some big ones of it so people can see what was identified. And where do they, where, how are we going to get this out there? That's well, at engineering, so if people want a copy of it. We have a great big plotter that we can print this stuff with. But we're not going to print it commercially. You know, we'll, we'll print a few of them. Then you need to take the map to a printer and print them. Right. So it sounds printing like them with a plotter is extremely expensive. You don't want like to do it all the time. Perhaps we need to table this and get yes. all of the stakeholders, which Mr. Chrysler, and Mr. Lackey, to meet with Mr. Sun, Mr. Dallaroca, all to identify what we've got so that we don't have multiple maps being paid for in May. Right. So perhaps right. tourism could table this yeah, for now. Just yeah. be a master trail and then all this stuff will overlay on. And we might not have it right away in, in immediately, but hopefully we will have it at the beginning of the summer or middle of the summer or something like that. Would it, you know. We can't print them up commercially, but would it be possible to print out a number of them and hang them up in different locations around town? You could, but I mean you can you can print them up commercially too. I mean it's a government document. It's not a private document. You know, right. For it, it's available to the right. public. So once we have the stakeholder group, then maybe the first thing tourism does is just provide some dollars locally to print them, mm -hmm. as Mr. Wallace is suggesting. Well, and, so and they're like I said, summer. I think we need to be careful right now because the, some of them cross private property. So we need to identify whose property they're crossing mm -hmm. and whether we need to change them just a little bit to make it go around private property. Does that pretty much makes us liable because we. Who from the tourism group would meet with the stakeholders? I, well, 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 I already do, so I'll you know, use myself. The, these consultants just said them. don't publish it yet until you find okay. out for sure they can all be used. Mr. Salazar is working on the radio. Is there anyone else from tourism board that would meet with the stakeholders? Uh, Ms. Campbell will. Greg, are those private property uh, areas, are they highlighted somehow on that map? Yeah, and they they identified a bunch of them, but our assessor's records are not very complete. And so I think yeah. to really dig into some of these, we're going to end up going to Trinidad Abstract and Mr. Roca, would you give them the map and that? say, yeah, totally. I mean, stakeholder meeting. Yeah, everything's, cool. in everything's in place that we need to be super successful in this space right now. And okay. Have you talked to any of the property yourself, owners? I have spoken to some property owners, and, 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 and interestingly enough, with the whole Fisher's Peak, there's some people out there that are. They're kind of like, well, you know, we know there's going to be a lot of change here. We're open to a conservation easement because that'll preserve our quality of life here sort of thing. So they're definitely having those conversations. I think they're going to, you know, have to have them amongst themselves as families because this is, you know, a lot of properties that go back a number of years and, you know, they're pretty close to their hearts sort of thing. But it, those people are starting to, to, to say to themselves because, you know, everybody's excited about Fisher's Peak, too, at the same time. So the, the, the fact that they get to play a role... I think you'll have some, um, and then of course there's going to be people who are going to be like, no, you know, mm -hmm. and that's okay, you know, I mean, it's their property. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sun, since THK is based on Salida, do you think we could invite them to come up and sit down with these stakeholders so we sure. can talk about it? Um, so I'll have Ms. Hackett liaison with you to get that contact so she can organize a meeting. So THK comes down and they can sit at the table and show what they've got, and Ms. Campbell will join from tourism, and Mr. Chrysler and Mr. Lackey from yeah, tourism. And, and, uh, it's just now getting off the ground, but there was a consultant hired to do the study of all of Highway 12. So if Maybe you want to see who Mr. they Holden are, could, make sure yes. we can bring them yeah. in. So you yeah. bring them into the conversation as well. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so this may not happen in two weeks. Okay, okay. But, right. but that study of Highway 12 is a damn near million dollar study. Mm -hmm. It's not like throwing a few dollars at something. Okay. And uh, there's huge issues that have to be overcome with that. There's places the right-of-way is 30 feet wide. It, it barely covers the roadway. So there's there's potential for having to buy land to put a trail in, different things like that, because uh, even though the, the racers where you kind of control the roadway during the race want to be on the roadway, it's not wide enough for most traffic. People do not get out of the way of bicycles anymore. They go away. It's one of the people used to that. <laughs> so, Madam Vice Chair, could we get a motion then to table this item? And I motion to go. Can we have I motion to go. I move. A second. I'll second. Roll call, Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Kress? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. yes. I keep saying Mr. Salazar? Yes. <laughs> 
then at the board's direction, we are going to develop a stakeholder group and we'll set some type of meeting so that we can move forward with this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Okay. Next on the agenda. Explore Los Angeles County Dirt Series sponsorship grant request. So, Madam Vice Chair, what I have is the original sponsorship agreement that was provided by uh, Backshot Bicycle Travel Supply. Uh, I also have the grant application included with that, um, just for your review. And this will be included with the um, other grant applications that are uh, have been submitted for the advertising and marketing to the for the March grant cycle. Um, also provided to you is a letter uh, from city manager for your review pertaining to this um, policy item as well. Okay, first of all, um, has everybody read the letter you read? Yes, I have. Any questions? Um, was Mr. Della Roca sent up this letter? We were given the letter five minutes before the meeting. He has not seen a copy of the letter? He has not seen a copy. I suggest that he reads the letter. Okay. Is Ms. Campbell going to read that into the record, or do you, would you like for us to pass Ms. Del Mr. Del Roca the letter right now? Both. Yeah. Both. Okay. Mayor, can you provide Mr. Del Roca sure. a copy? Um, okay. I don't know, Madam Vice Chair, that you have to read it into the record. You have that option. Mm -hmm. I would recommend you read it into it. Okay. I'm going to give him a little time to read this. Perfect. Okay. We weren't clear on how to proceed. Me neither. Me Address to Cy Michaels, Chair of Tenga Tourism Board. This Michaels is not here. So, myself, Camilla Campbell, is going to read this. Co chair. Mayor, um, dear Miss Michaels, Mayor Rico, and I discussed a proposal that we understand is before the Tourism Board this week from Juan Della Roca for funding of one or more bicycle events that he is planning. Mayor Rico and I discussed a contract with Mr. Della Rocco signed by the Parks and Recreation Commission in 2017 to study and produce maps of the bike trails in the Trinidad area. At the end of that contract, Mr. Della Rocco provided a PowerPoint presentation but did not provide anything else referenced in his contract or an email from him. Mayor Rico suggested the Tourism Board delay consideration of awarding him another contract and he fulfilled the first one with the city. I am attaching an email from Mr. Della Roca that describes his obligations in his words at the at, in his words. At the time, he requested pay out of the remainder of his contract, even though he has not yet provided all the delivery deliverables. I can done reading this. The city refers to pay out the contract until the deliverables were received. If you have any questions about this proposal, feel free, please feel free to contact me by phone or email at Greg's son at Trinidad, I mean Trinidad.gov.colorado.gov. Sincerely, Greg's son. So, on that note, I am making a motion. I would like anybody discussion. 
Motion and second first, please. I motion that we table this until certain things are discussed with Mr. Dalaroco and Greg Sun and the city of Trinidad. And um, I second it. I roll call the discussion. Discussion. I'm sorry. Discussion. I recommend that Mr. Dalaroco comes to resolve with the city before we move forward. Mm -hmm. Because I always want to be liable for anything that's no, it, and it's fine because I'm moving. Like I said, I'm moving There's forward. There's a motion on the oh, table. Sorry. One, I'm sorry. That's that's my recommendation. Um, I I would just like to add on behalf of staff that this in no way we are very excited to have Mr. Dolaroka in the community. He brings, as we just had in the previous discussion, a wealth of knowledge to the table. We don't in any way want to lose that. We are proud to have him as part of our community when we're talking with sponsors and we're talking with the state. His name comes up. He's he's so valuable to what we're trying to accomplish. So I think maybe facilitating a discussion between Mr. Delaroca and Mr. Sun and we bring this back uh, as quickly as we can. One other thing on that and the reason why the letter is so much is that uh, we also have to answer to the balance of city council, mm -hmm. and they don't they probably would see the same way as the letter reads. So, I believe we can resolve this in a conversation. Okay. Can I bring up something about the mm -hmm. contract that he gave us? Sure. Let's take a motion on the table, okay. and then um, we're happy because it's an agenda item to have Mr. Delaroca come up, and we can talk about things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Ms. Campbell. Yes. Mr. Kress? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes. So I think it would be appropriate to have Mr. Dalaroka come up and let's talk with him through any questions that you have. Mm -hmm. And once again, from a staff perspective, to reassure you that we're very much mm -hmm. wanting to support these things. Yeah, I, I, right, so got we're it. Good. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Juan De La Roca. No. Mr. Chris, you have questions? No, the only question I had is on, is on the original one. Is, um, it's on the, I don't know if everybody has the, the original, but yep. I, the one thing that I have feelings about is you want to do a, a two or three minute late film. Or there are any four, actually. Four. I don't want to fund anything that doesn't represent Trinidad. I don't want to fund uh, nothing from San Isabel National Forest or the Comanche grasslands. Those are the two things I we talk about: how many roads and how many how many how, what we have in our community. And I don't believe that tourism dollars should go to fund. Uh, Comanche grasslands or San Isabel National Forest. I those those two things. I that's why I want to see what goes in our magazines from now on. I want to see what I want. I want to represent Trinidad. I don't want to represent Comanche grasslands. It's so close to Lahana. Correct. Um, Rocky uh, or this national, this uh, San Isabel is so close to Colorado City, Rye, Pueblo, and everybody that you're taking to film is going to eat in those restaurants. Is you know is is and that's that's not what I want to represent. I want to represent Trinidad. That's that's what I want to do. Um, and how much of, of this is our tourism dollars? you can maybe go ask them for that money, you know, in those communities, but I would like to exclude the money from that, that you're gonna take these dollars and go up there, or to, I don't know if anybody else has any feelings about that. I think it's a great idea. I mean, the whole point of anything with tourism is to support Trinidad. It really is, I mean, it's, the way we the way we fill our restaurants and our stores and all that is from tourists shopping there. So I think it kind of goes back in that magazine where they we have a full page ad and it's 
picture of I think Blue Lake or Bear Lake. Mm -hmm. It just don't make sense. You know, the the full page ad is not even of Trinidad. So I think even uh, and most people see videos. You want to see our awesome city. You know, all the features we have. I don't think you know showing a picture of San Isabel or these other places. I think it would help. You know, our city. I mean, that's more of a Colorado tourism thing. I think not a Trinidad tourism. Correct. <clears throat> So one of the things I'm going to encourage you guys to be thinking is broader. And I understand why Trinidad, the city of Trinidad specifically, is important. And it's going to be a huge feature within it. I, I, I've already had a lot of discussions with my cinematographer, my photographers, and how we're going to incorporate both the urban and rural pieces into this. Uh, one of the places I'm going to encourage you guys to take a look at is Bentonville, Arkansas. And one of the reasons why Bentonville has been very successful in becoming a bike destination in the last several years is because they have worked together as a region. So I'm going to encourage you guys to be thinking beyond just the city of Trinidad. Yes, this will be the base because everybody that's coming through, the 15,000 cars, we're right here. We're going to capture people here. The rides that I have designed are starting and ending in Trinidad. They are designed to create a festive atmosphere in our downtown area, get people hanging out here. So to, to the point of affecting restaurants, yes, absolutely. So one of the things that I am going to be doing uh, as this progresses and plays out is measuring the sort of effectiveness that I have. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, are you guys familiar with earned media? Mm -hmm. Earned media is something that you earn without paying for it. Mm -hmm. 5280 is going to feature Trinidad in the May travel issue. So I'm going to go back and measure what sort of impact that sort of had in the long run. But we're also going to see it because we're going to have people hanging out here over the summer. We are going to have people um, hanging out downtown. So one of the other things that I would love to have measured as this is all going through is where were we last year with downtown spending and where are we next year mm -hmm. with downtown spending. Mm -hmm. The other one is I want to see how we affect the lodging tax as well. Mm -hmm. So I do want to see lodging going up. That so, but I have to, I have to take this region and bring it all around and really show it and highlight it in a way that gets somebody excited to park their car under the highway, pull their bike off, go up. Because you can access the San Isabel National Forest from here. And people will be riding their bikes from here up the San Isabel National Forest and coming back. So I, I, I'm going to encourage to yeah, think broader here because we have a region that is is, is very uh, appealing. I did that flight yesterday. Over. It's, we live in an amazing place. And we need to highlight and we need to show all these things. But yes, that's it comes back feel, to That's why I feel our money should be spent here. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, I could see... I could see the entire area, you know, but my tourism dollars come from these people that stay in our motels here. Correct. And, that, and, 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 and that's and the they, point is that, yes, print out the How many of these people venture on into our restaurants? How many of these people venture into our stations and, and our two supermarkets, the Walmart? It's, it's, it's about Trinidad. These tourism dollars are about Trinidad. That's what I believe. You know, whether you see a broader picture because you're, I, go ahead. I think also, Tom, that uh, while I ride my bike from home to downtown and then walk it back because I can't ride up the hill, <laughs> I don't have the same capabilities that these bikers do. When they get going, they go. So it's not a stretch for them to be based here in Trinidad and to ride even to Raton over the hills, the county roads, as, as will happen, but also to ride over into Huerfano County and, and beyond. I, I think that in a way, um, I totally understand what you're saying and I totally agree with that. If, if tourism is used as the base and that is the highlight, it doesn't necessarily harm us that um, if you're based here that you're going to ride say to Werfano County, Upper Werfano County, because it's you know so close. Um, I would like the pictorials and the videos though to, in the majority of those items, to feature Trinidad. Oh, absolutely. And, 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 absolutely. And you know the trails going up to Fisher's Peak. I agree with what Tom's saying, but I do think. I mean, we have we have from here. To Monument Lake, which is city owned, to Cochera, to La Vida. They're a closer partner to us than 
the Comanche grasslands and you know, Tom, I think what you're really saying is that, not from my perspective, but what I see is that we are not partnering with them. They should be partnering with us. Thank you. I think that's really what you're, mm -hmm. you're saying is that maybe contacting them to join us if they want to put some tax dollars, some dollars into this and uh, promoting their area. I, mean, I think that's what you're kind of talking about. Well, you know. Yeah. But they're going to say this, they're going to say the same thing to one. We, if we're going to give you money, we want you to highlight us. It's a push pull. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, because they're giving him some money now, and so are we. Mm -hmm. So we're both being highlighted. Mine's more of a okay, you have a question. question. I, do, I do, and it's, it's not necessarily related to your funding pool, but the film company that you're using. Are they call Colorado based? Uh, Futuristic Films in Denver. Futuristic Films. Frank yeah. Mikkel, uh, who is, they're super accomplished and a really good yeah, friend of mine that I've known for a long time. Okay, the reason I'm asking is, can you ask them if they are approaching Colorado Film Commission for a 20% incentive on what they're doing down here? Uh, no, we didn't, uh, you know, because our budget isn't that huge. I mean, we're not That's that big okay. of, of a production. Uh, but, I mean, I, it's certainly a valid question, and, you know... Uh, the incentive is based on how many people they employ. So, let's say three people or four people are employed really on the project. We're really like, three people max. Okay. Of, like, this is... Because, you know, we are limited on budget here. It's not... Like, I'm not you know, I'm not running around, like, would feeding you, everyone on set and, you know... Would you be willing to have a separate discussion about a possible film incentive that might help yeah, support absolutely. the... Absolutely. What you're going to do, especially if you could expand that into more of a feature link and, documentary. Right. And, 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 right, and keep in mind with this stuff too, it feeds into our creative industries designation downtown as well. Well, that's that's also the, the part of this that I'm also incorporating with these films and the photography and the uh, and the events and everything is that I, I want to highlight the art artistic side of it all because it ties back into what we are downtown in terms of like okay. the district. That's all I had was just futuristic films in Denver. Yep. Okay. I'm going to be there next week. That's why I'm going to ask the film commissioner if they've worked with them before. Okay. Thanks. Uh, one more question, real quick. <clears throat> and I know, I'm sure your races are still planned and stuff, but mm -hmm. I mean, we're a month away. So, so again, these aren't races. I, I'm very specific that these are not races. They're, they're, they're rides. rides. They're social yeah. rides. How many people do you have for the first fight? So, uh, so for the first ones, I have not uh, seen anyone quite sign up yet, but I had my first photo shoot this weekend. I have a group of guys coming down from Denver. Uh, I will be starting the uh, social media side of it as far as advertising on it. Uh, and, you know, this is the first run on it. And I added the event layer to, to give people something to do. Uh, it, it's really on me in terms of, like, I'm the one who's either going to make money or not. Like, you know, and so... Uh, I'm not overly concerned. The big one is May, though, because May. 5280 is going to feature true that in... That's the Sunflower the, Valley tour? Yes. Okay. Uh, and we, we're going to highlight... That's the one I'm seeing. Uh, uh, Southwest Chief Fest. Right. Uh, we also have the Pony Express that month. So, really, that month is going to be the month that I'm, I'm most Major focused on, because I, I, I think we're going to see a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm very confident of that. And... Uh, I think, you know, uh, all this stuff is going to really make for a lively, fun summer here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Juan. Keep up the work. I'll, I'm, I'm kind of crazy really right good. now, but I'll follow up with you okay. on the film part. Okay. Even if it's like 10,000, right? Yes, it's small. It's 10,000, yeah. Okay. All right. Bicycle presentation, Pioneer Room. Okay, so so I had requested or suggested that um, bicycle presentation be made in the community to educate community members on the upcoming bicycle events and the possibility of bicycles bicyclists being in town. Uh, so um, she directed me to find um, a venue. I contacted Trinidad State Community College. They have an opening. For the date that she suggested is March 14th, which is just right around the corner. Uh, and we keep in mind we still have to do advertising for this so we can get people to this. Um, and the cost would be $100 for the venue, and I needed to know if that was going to be approved or not so that we can go forward with this as soon as possible. Or if this is still something that you want to pursue. I would still, I would like to pursue it, but I think 
just pushing it March 14th. Can we delay the day and see what else they have opened or? That's entirely up to the board. Because that is like next week. Week for tomorrow. Yeah, that's, that's kind of. And we're not so ready you, for that Do you one. want to set a new date then? Or? Yeah, I would like to set a new date, even if it's the first of April. Um, um, Madam um, Chairman, what we might do is contact the Chronicle and see if they'll do a story leading up to the biking season and that there will be a community event. Uh, maybe hold it between uh, Mr. De La Roca's Miner's Classic uh, ride and his Apishaba Run ride and have the article go out right before that miners ride the first week in April and talk about the series mm -hmm. of rides that are going right. to be available yeah. and then also talk about tourism wanting to host mm -hmm. maybe right. like in between the two the week of, the middle week of April right. a public meeting or a public presentation well also that it, it would be beneficial since we have a contract with the radio station to use some of those spots for these upcoming right. events as well as talking about the um, uh, community forum. Maybe once we get a date set, then mm -hmm. Joey can. So, what a date of the 13th or around in there that, that week? Of April? Of April? Yeah. You want to keep it on a Thursday? Thursday's fine. Thursday's fine. So, that week on a Thursday? Yeah. Do we know where, as a city where we're at as far as getting um, like signage up or stencils up or anything like that up? I, I don't know. Does anybody know where we're at on that? I have an excellent suggestion for you. Uh, What's that? <laughs> <laughs> they just uh, kind of uh, lined Arizona. They have a marker going down and then they have a wide line on both sides. Couldn't you go in with another line on the inside of that? Because it's pretty, I don't know if you've, have you seen it, Juan? How Arizona is, how they yes. marked it out now? You can actually have a bike lane up Arizona, down Nevada, and up Kansas. That's and they're pretty wide. That's like I brought, I brought that up last night about oh, okay. you know, trying to mark the... And I think those, be those streets right there <laughs> are perfect for a start because they're wide, they, they allow parking, <coughs> they're wide enough to allow two lanes of traffic plus bike lanes on both sides. Yeah, somebody brought that up and said afterwards about the Nevada and Arizona mm -hmm. streets because they well, are Kansas so is also a good addition. Yeah. 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 Well, I just need to get the, the residents of Trinidad aware that but I think this if is you, starting to happen. But I think if you would just incorporate those safe areas right there because those are basically the, the safest right now. So can I go back to policy item then? Uh, so Thursday, April the 11th, and would you agree to the cost for the venue at TSJC? Which was $100. Um, yeah. I think she said Pioneer Room was $200, but it only is 100 so that's the upstairs and the downstairs. Yeah. Pioneer would be good, so that would be 200. Yeah. So, yeah. do I have a motion then to approve that? So moved. I'll second. Roll call. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Press? Yes, sir. Ms. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Salazar? Yes. All right, I will pursue that. And then work with the Chronicle. I'll contact them and um, maybe contact Mr. De La Roca and we can work up a little story on for the newspaper and then. Joey and I, when we talk to the Chronicle, we can work on maybe some spot ads. And then through our social media page for tourism, we can work with Juan to work up what he wants us to put on the social media pages through tourism. And, and keep yeah. in mind, too, with the bike routes that I established for these events, they live on. They're routes that anyone can do at any day, and that's the idea with our awareness that we're going to be creating is that we're going to give people routes that they can do with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Today. Today. I need to take myself off. Yeah. All right, next on it is visitor information profile, RFP. So that's what we talked about, about with earlier. Tara earlier. So we're going to so we're table gonna it to our work session. I need a motion. Oh, no, that's just a discussion. Okay. 
I'm hoping that with the ten thousand dollars, we don't really have to do a formal RFP. What we could do is get a list of people from the state office that generally do these types of profiles and just call them directly and get a couple of quotes for you. Um, and our hope is that we can accomplish it with the ten thousand, and it doesn't cost additional dollars. But until we get those quotes, we won't know. So why don't we do this? Why don't we contact the Colorado Tourism Office and then try to get um, the names of some particular people that can put together a visitor information profile, especially if there's someone regionally or that can do something like that, and then let us bring back those proposals. I don't know if we'll have those in two weeks, but we'll get them as soon as we can. Would you also inquire if they have existing current data because I'm sure as much as tourism does research, there must be something available. For We're hoping things like the Holiday Inn or La Quinta might be able to go back 24 months and provide the zip codes mm -hmm. of those that stay there. And um, that's basically what the visitor profile will include. So let us, we just received the money from them last week. So they've approved the use of the 10,000 toward this. Let us get into that. And once again, I don't know if we're going to have this in two weeks or this is a work session for April. But we'll keep it on your agenda so you know it's moving along. Okay. Moving on. Tourism trailer storage. So to apprise the board of what's going on with the tourism trailer, um, it is currently being, or it has been historically stored in the space to create, and since construction is going to begin on that building, everything needs to be removed from there. So that proposed, that gives us a problem, where are we going to put the trailer? So we're, I've been working with the city to find out if there's somewhere we can put it. And everything that's in that building is being put everywhere. everywhere. Um, and so we've been tasked with trying to find a location for the trailer. The trolley is currently being stored at Barney's Garage and we're paying for that. So I contacted them to see if there was available space there. She said yes there is and it would be at a cost of $40 per month. We have an option of storing it in another location, however that location is outside uh, in a fenced in gated area. So it would be entirely up to you to decide whether you want to store it inside. If you want me to continue to look for other areas that are indoors, if you want to go outside and just put it in a locked area, I just need some direction, or whether you want to spend the $40 a month to store it indoors with the trolley. I'm going to say, to $40, why don't you say you want 40 bucks a month? Right now, we're paying $2,400 a year for storage of the trolley. And I was wondering how big of a space that that entails, and how, how big is the trigger that you guys have. The tourism trailer is yeah. the little one that we use for so hot chocolate. There's a, a, a square foot space of, you might check to see if there might fit in our this area that we're in. And then where they do that. Where the trolley is stored. That's what I'm That's what right. she's saying. So that there's not any additional cost to what I'm saying. Oh. Um, how big is that space our trolley right. fits okay. in? And so that's what I asked her. I said, do you have space for our trolley is? $480 more a month. You were paying $2,400 I mean, a year. It's so a year. For, for the year, it's $480. Yeah, so for an additional 480 she will store it in the same location as the trolley. I've already but approached her on that. No, it, no free. No free. No free. Mm -hmm. I, I, I prefer it to be stored inside because of its contents inside. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is stuff inside of it, isn't there? Or do you Not pull much. it out? Not, Not much, much, but it, I think it needs to be stored inside. Yeah. I, I think it needs my little trailer. It's just a diamond in the rough. I would like to see it outside as advertising, but then that's all day, all summer, you know, mm -hmm. not in winter time. I like to see it parked at Miners because it shares a tourist, little tourist attraction with Trinidad all over it. Mm -hmm. And maybe we could do different little things that would get people to do a little different things. So if it is on a monthly basis and you want to keep and it out. And we could pull it out, yes. Pull yeah, it out. we could pull it out. And then perhaps we wouldn't have to pay for that monthly fee for that month or those you know, months. Because it sat down there at the Miners Memorial the whole month of December, December. right? And we didn't have no problem with it. But we used it every Friday night. But hopefully, yeah, I know. Hopefully, we could maybe u utilize it this summer a little bit too. On, on Friday. Can you ask if the if if the months if there's some months that we stored in there that there is no charge and 
like if we start in November, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we start putting it on Main Street in November, right after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So if we keep it out. It is on a monthly basis. Is mm -hmm. And like she said, so we don't have to do a contract. Don't to put it in contract. different areas of Trinidad during the summer months, you know. So maybe we need to store it for 60 days? Yeah. Till May. But I do want to see it inside, so. Yeah. So we'll need a motion. So we'll need a motion. I motion to keep it in storage. <laughs> for forty dollars a month. For forty dollars a month. I love so much. Second it. Roll call, Ms. Campbell. Yes. Mr. Kress. Yes. Ms. Lackey. Yes. Mr. Salazar. Yes. Uh, so the next thing in your packet is a proposal for go travel sites, um, and it's prefaced with an invoice, but this is not an invoice for past services, this would be an invoice going forward. So Greg broke go travel sites is um, been a uh, website that we that has been utilized apparently for the last several years, I don't see how long. But this is the website that generates uh, the requests for our travel guides. When I report back to you monthly as we work for my fulfillment, um, we have, according to this sheet, it shows you, uh, looks like it goes back to 2015, the increase in request for fulfillment with our Trinidad Travel Guide has increased triple um, from 2015. It's just exponentially just increased. So I, w I would say the background on this is in 2015, Cy was fulfilling these out of the La Quinta <laughs> by providing the Trinidad uh, Loves Company brochure in a brick envelope by sending it out. When Jonathan uh, came on board, the fulfillments, and we went to the guide that we have now, there was a period in 2017 where no fulfillment was done uh, by sending hard copy. I think you got an email saying visit our website, and then that was an issue that Cy really addressed with staff, and when Marty came on board, the Welcome Center staff is now providing the fulfillment. And since that fulfillment has started to go out, we're seeing an increase on a monthly basis. So we're back to providing actually a physical copy of the travel planner for anybody who uh, contacts us. So um, this is the way we get those leads through Colorado.com. This is an additional service that provides us with all the leads. They come as, um, do they come with spreadsheets, Marty, and you transfer them into labels? Mm -hmm. We have international travels, travelers that reach out. So We just had one last week from Belize, Brazil. I thought that was quite interesting. But we also had a visitor last week from Switzerland that was a recipient of one of our travel guides. Hmm. So I, I can't provide the analytics on actually who receives those and who arrives, but these are people that are requested the information and who we have fulfilled that information for. So the motion would be to continue services with those travel sites? My motion to continue. <clears throat> I'll second. Roll call. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Press? Yes. Ms. Lackey? Can I make a comment? Sure. We're 12,300 overdrawn in advertising. Do we want to do another $1,100? Or move it into outside contract services? Um, staff would recommend you leave it in contract in advertising and okay. at the end of the first quarter in April, we rebalance the budget. Okay. Fine. I, I'm trying to decide how to vote. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you have a motion and a second, and this yes. is the discussion. Okay, yes, I'll approve it. 
Mr. Salazar? Yes. Okay, so your last item, uh, Tourism Ambassador Training Proposals. Okay, so Donna Haddo, just to give you some background, contacted me to propose um, an ambassador training program um, at the college. And she is basing that on a um, presentation that was made by uh, the Tourism Ambassador Training Program some years ago by the Southern Rockies Crossroads and Cultures Group, the Pueblo Chamber of Commerce, and uh, Canyons and Plains of the Southeast. So this is just a discussion item. Um, historically, this tourism board has um, produced a video for hospitality training, and I believe that was back in 2011 or so. Um, and so they came up with this. Do you remember this, Terry? Yes, I do. Okay, so they did this. What she's trying to do is educate the community and our frontline leaders on being better ambassadors for the city. And so this program would be at no cost to the tourism board. It would be provided by the college as um, a community service. Uh, so she wanted me to just approach you with the idea, see if that's something that you might be interested in, and then she can work out the details and come back and do a presentation. So just let me know. It's just more or less a heads up on a program. You know, to interject something here, something that I've always thought about, I don't know if I've ever talked to you, Taylor, in the past about this, uh, some kind of an ambassador training. And one of the things is, the businesses in our community, the convenience stores, and their employees, they're all ambassadors now. How do we reach them and get them trained? Because one of the things that you hear, we probably have all gone to other communities, and somewhere we, we might ask, where's this? And some places, they're pretty well versed as to what goes on in their communities. Others say, well, I don't know. And I'm not sure what's happening in here in Trinidad, because we're not, not a visitor, but uh, here. But I wonder if there's, how, if there's a way to get that word out and something like this in the hands of the business people so that they can, if they're willing to show their employees how to handle questions when they arise. And that's what this is being proposed as, is um, training for the community as like our one, ambassadors. Like for as long as I worked for UPS, so many people would come up to me and say, I know you're the one who's going to help me. <laughs> you know, so that, and, and, and it's amazing if, if everybody did that. Because I've been in stores where people have said, well, I don't know where that's at. You know, me in a, de in a delivering aspect, you know, and I say, well, I can help you. But I think that when you have that, that begins that relationship with you and that person, welcoming them, welcoming, welcoming them into your community. And from the merchants, it's sometimes the visitors, we have just the visitor that will stop the car, and I see so many of these people that they need to stretch their legs and walk around the streets and they end up going the length of town. I had one lady that stopped the car the other day to just to stretch legs and they bought something from me and they decided i told them go downtown go and i said when you come back your box will be packaged up they have no intention of really staying here but the wealth of information that your merchants to do downtown is amazing what we could give out the information for because some of these people you never see they're here for maybe two or three hours or maybe the weekend and sometimes we're the only people that really talk to them except for the motels and they need information. They need to be aware. And the Welcome Center people need to be aware. And that's what I was going to That's what yeah, I was because say. So they, from the Welcome they need Center to, standpoint, yeah. I need to re-educate my volunteers right. as they well. They need to know what's, what's downtown and right. and what I, you know, it just, it's amazing the amount of people that we see as merchants that just stop for a couple hours and they hit our streets and they turn around and go away. Or they come up for Amarillo just for the day. You know, when we look at it and say, just for the day you come, or Carl Springs, I had a couple of them from Carl Springs, just for the day, they turn around and go home. 
you know, you might find out one, something you might do is to maybe send a letter out to all the merchants to see if they want to participate. Yeah. Yes. Camille. I think as a mayor, you ought to require them. <laughs> yes, Tom. Let, let me offer you a, a, some insight. We did a frontline training video in 2011. Uh -huh. yeah. We delivered a box full. Oh, She's you got holding it, it right oh, here. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's like I've, I've repeatedly said we delivered the box and they were never used. Mm -hmm. It was us and the SCRT, and we, it's a great video. And it yes. was was like 13 in that video. Yeah, it was, it was eight years ago. I can put I it on like YouTube, him. too, though, but there's booklets that went with it. I do so want to recommend the, Donna had to continue on with this. I think that would be a great idea one, for one all of, us, of it. One of the suggestions that I would like to make is, when my kids were growing up, whenever we traveled, we always took, we always went and got something to eat, but we always took our kids to a park in a community. Mm -hmm. Because our kids can, can play, they can stretch out, and hopefully they fall asleep when they got back in the car. But I think that's what Trinidad needs to do. We really need to focus on our parks. We really need to, they, and I, I really love seeing what you've done with Central Park in that playground area. I think that's excellent. Like, it's a safer now than, than it has been, you know, uh, by putting that rubber matting on that playground set. I, I, I think that this city really needs to emphasis, emphasize on these parks and patrolling, keeping clean. And the biggest disheartening thing for me is to see that restroom. I don't know how much the city paid for it to be built, but it's it's sad what comes in and goes out of it. And I just think that's where the emphasis of this city needs to really. Well, we when, do. When we I, I, to, as a merchant, I do send people down to stretch their legs out. Yeah, I mean, I, I did actually just said Chloe, she went, we didn't play the, the mm -hmm. park that she knew, they actually did that park now too, the, the ground, yeah. Yeah. which is, it's really nice, and I think they, and it's kind of funny, it's a couple months back, I'd always get on Carlos, I'd send him a text, and be like, look at the pictures of this park, you know, the, the grounds are just a mess, you know, the wood chips are a mess, so I, I think the city's done a great job, but I think now is we got to figure out a way to keep it safe, so I, when we used to go, we'd see a lot of tourists go to Safeway, and they'd be eating their lunch over there. Well, they didn't feel comfortable because they need to get some homeless people or some things happening. They would literally pack their stuff up and bolt out of here. Mm -hmm. Well, but they also might not even know where there's parks around here, too, that yeah. they're sitting in the car mm -hmm. and eating because they just in a rush to get going, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, we do see, out of merchants, we do see a lot of people that are just an hour, two hours, stretch their legs, it, walk the streets, what a beautiful little community with a great little store, and out the door they go, and they're back on the highway. Mm -hmm. and, but it is nice to see that. It is mm -hmm. nice, because many times I wanted to stop here, and I never did, and I finally did, you know. And it's good to hear that, and it's good to hear the compliments coming from these people that are just here maybe for an hour or two hours. It is nice. We'll be back. It is nice to hear. And we sometimes we're the first ones to see you people, so I do recommend moving forward. All right, then I will work with Donna, and, and uh, we'll let her know that the tourism board will, will partner in some way, however we need to be right. to move forward yes. with them. Okay, all right. thank you. I, I have all the merchants emails that there, so Can I get a copy of that? What, just if I could just look, we, um, please have them, and I'll bring it back to you. Tom, why do we have more? They were stored, the last time we checked, they were downstairs, and then they moved them next door. Ask uh, Victor to see if he can track them down. That so one was in my files, there, and I pocket. gave it to... There was a, a huge box. They had a file. When Anna Rodolfo was here, we went down. Was For a there. while, they were in that closet. They got moved around then. So. Yeah. But they're, they're in one of these two buildings. Okay. And they're yeah, small booklets. To another meeting. <laughs> They go with them. There's some small pamphlets for people to put in their pocket and go, oh. So the cheat sheet kind of thing. For the um, we need, we're going to move on because I think you really do need to get to work here. <laughs> um, the review of Anders' presentation. Okay, so I'm going to briefly just because uh, Ms. Lackey and Mr. Salazar were not here. This is this spreadsheet. This is one of those outcomes of the craft initiative. And so what Andrew was asked to do was to look at all different types of media. He didn't include TV, but he did include radio, billboards, website, just general content creation, email campaigns, and social media. So this was created by Andrew getting on the phone, talking with 
who the state recommended seven different jurisdictions, talking with a list of um, marketing groups that work with these seven jurisdictions to price out kind of what an overall advertising campaign might be that had all of these components. This wasn't intended that you necessarily turn around and start implementing it. I think Sai had mentioned at the last meeting doing an RFP for some of this marketing, and that's why the outside contract line had the 65000 in it. Now we've started digging into the outside contract line with some of our advertising and marketing dollars. And it sounds like as these opportunities come up, we may still be doing that. So this isn't meant to necessarily inform you right now, today, of what you want to do. But once again, just like I would recommend you do, you have the conversation about fiscal policy. I think you also need to start thinking of a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, what types of components from this do you want to implement? What is your priority for those? And what costs do you, and he's given costs that were relevant as of right. fall of 2018, so I think you have to keep that in mind as well. So if social media is a huge priority of yours to create a just a, a very vibrant and powerful social media campaign out there and you're going to hire someone to do that, these are the costs of what the best practices were costing fall of 18. So this was meant to stay in your folders and provide guidance to you as you go forward. Now, we did talk about when we budgeted in the fall starting to implement part of this. So obviously looking at the total dollars, and I know it's hard to read in red, you don't have that available capital now. But I'll go back to, and especially since the mayor's here, getting you prepared to have that conversation with city council. Mr. Kress asked in this financial that we show as many years of history as we had. So we could show, you could show council in your conversation of how lodging tax has increased. You can also, also that, that conversation is coming depending on the state funding. If we're able to get state funding, it's gonna loosen up a little bit more money for you this year. If it's not going to come, then that conversation with the city council about where you go from here with the Welcome Center costs and, and the 50000 that you have for this year for marijuana and the 50000 that you have for next year for marijuana to support the event planner position and then what does that mean in the third year. So I know these are all really high level, but it's not inappropriate for you to start thinking about where your costs are going to go with the Welcome Center if you get state funding, if you don't, and what the city, your relationship with council from a funding perspective is going to be. But most importantly, this sheet broke down. If your goal in three to five years, which is what you stated in craft initiative, is in five years you wanted a fully funded, fully, fully robust marketing campaign that was hitting a variety of media channels out there talking about Trinidad. So you know, just kind of in closing, I would say this is kind of to give you an idea of what that might cost. And so I, I don't really have any direction for you on that. I don't think I would recommend an RFP right now. You've got to get your hands around your finances a little bit better. Um, anyway, what, questions? What I like about this and for Joey and Nancy to look at is, is they give a, he gave us an array of options to choose from. And we can pick from them and you know bounce back and forth. But I think it's a it's a, a good roadmap as to where we can go and I think and I think it's a, a, a totally something we should follow all the way out, you know, because he he put a lot of emphasis in this and I think this is this is our roadmap for advertising. It's in the goal. Yeah. And the craft initiative was meant to say, okay, this is your fully vetted, diverse marketing plan. The reason the visitor profile was chosen to use that 10,000 is when you're talking social media or you're talking radio or you're talking print, if you know who your visitor is, then when you're directing your marketing, it's not just a general social media, it's a directed social media. Mm -hmm. This is the visitor you have, this is the visitor you have the potential to develop, and this is maybe that ideal visitor that you're not yet seeing. So the idea is to merge that visitor profile with this marketing channel 
and be really specific so that when you spend your $200,000 or your $150,000 in marketing, you're now sitting here three years later having a discussion saying, here is the metrics that are coming back and you update your visitor profile and you can see if you've been successful in moving your visitor profile toward your goal. Okay, so that's kind of in general what the deliverable was out of craft was this right here. Okay, any okay. questions? Just out of curiosity, is that uh, 65 possible that we might get to the state? Yes. Uh, once the, if we are fortunate to get that. Yes. What about subsequent years? When do you think that would be possible? If we are able to get it, I think it'll be sub I think it'll be there subsequently. The question will be whether council can continuously subsidize the tourism board and um, we'll know in May whether that funding is going to be there or not. And then either way, the tourism board and council need to have a work session together. I'm, I'm recommending that because you've got 50000 this year to support the event planner and next year. So if you get tourism money, it doesn't mean you could make that request of council to continue that support. And I'm hoping by the time you're having that conversation with them, you've got a better handle on your finances and you're able to say, with that support, here's what we could continue to do. And we could continue to grow. I'm going to say whether you get, if you don't get the state funding and city council can't continue, I don't think you're ever going to be able to keep the Welcome Center open and do this. So that's the, that is the discussion really with council is what is, what do they want to see happen? And then if you have the finances to accomplish that, great. If you don't, then how can you partner with them to get there? Okay. Okay. Report okay, staff reports. Tara. Um, I'm I'm actually going to excuse myself. I have a meeting. I'm ten minutes late gotcha. too. And I my only report is that the twentieth is my last meeting, so I will be at your work session. Gotcha. Yes. What are we going to do without you? You're going to rely on Marty, and she's completely capable, and you've got the best council liaison because you have the mayor. So you're in great shape. You're in great shape. Right. Mark. Okay, I'll make this really quick. The update on the SoCo Tourism Summit. I put these in your packets. If anybody wants to attend this, you need to make your reservations. You have uh, funds in your in your budget, so if anybody wants to do this, go ahead and do it, and we'll take care of that. Um, um, everything's moving forward with the Mitchell, the restaurants. We have five restaurants that are going to do a Taste of Trinidad Six with Mooses. Um, um, I do. From Mooses, I do need a, a menu item so that I can report back to my tourism board on mm -hmm. what's being served. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, that's so cool. We do need to get dishes and flatware. Mitchell does not have those. Oh. So I'm going to have to do some creative requesting in the community to get some stuff that we need. Tourism binder, I'm working on that so that you have an accessible tourism binder with all your materials located here at City Hall. Thank that's you. an ongoing process. Give me time, please. I need a little time to work on this, but I will get it done. Uh, PSAs, KCRT, I was asked uh, to contact them to find out how much those would cost us. Um, so he's going to put together a proposal for us. on. But we do have some minutes in there that we can use for this, so it may not cost us anything okay. uh, to do those. Um, update on grant applications. We've received seven grants so far for the March cycle. Um, and we're working on those. Wally, I got yours, so thank you for leaving that. So that'll be um, in our next work session. Work session? No, actually, the closing of the cycle is oh, until okay. March 31st. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So they there still have go. time to get those right. there. Travel planner report. We had uh, 495 from GoCo, and we had 321. No, that's backwards. 425 from Go Colorado, which is what I just right. proposed to you, and 325 from uh, the, state. the state. So full, still fulfilling those. So that being said, we might have to um, move a little money around as far as our uh, uh, from our advertising to cover postage costs because we're right. getting some postage costs, and especially since postage has now gone up. Okay. Uh, marketing materials update. Uh, Sai asked me to find out what our marketing materials were. I have located all those, and so we're good for marketing materials. If anybody has any anything that they got going on where they need marketing materials, we do have some Trinidad stand-up banners, etc., that you can use for your events. 
next meeting March 20th, and I think that's about it. Just a reminder for everybody this year that tonight we're having that uh, event at uh, Mitchell for the uh, Pictures Big Deal. There's going to be a lot of people there. As a matter of fact, i got to go back to another meeting because uh, Coco Colorado is having their, um, their quarterly meeting, but I counted this one. There were 23 people just from the Coco Colorado board there. They'll all be there tonight. Yeah, the others from Nature Conservancy, Trust for Public Lands. And, uh, they've invited a lot of media. I think Caleb Del Boy, uh, Pueblo. They've invited uh, the Denver Public, the Public Chieftain, and somebody out of car. There are several uh, media outlets that might be there. I'm not sure who's all going to be there. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of company today. Yeah. So yes, small Mary, Business Mary, Development Mary. Uh, Council is also here. So we're using our trolley to do some transportation. So SBDC has been taken downtown to do to visit our restaurants. Uh, and then we're transporting the uh, um, GoCo group to the Mitchell tonight. So we're using our little trolley to do some marketing for us. There's a lot of marketing. Matter of fact, the reason why I didn't come right away to this meeting is we met with the SBA next door. Uh, Greg and I did this morning. So there, there's a lot of stuff going on in the other day. So it's kind of nice to see. One more thing. Oh, motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. 1115. Second. At 1115. <laughs> motion to adjourn. I want to work. 1115? Yes, ma'am. Second. Second. Roll call. Campbell. Yes. Press. Yes. Lappy, yes. Salazar. Yes. Okay. And thank you all. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.